and join together. Hello Facebook, hello YouTube, nice to be back with you. And we are going to be joined by one of our favourite guests of all time, Professor Dawn Sim, the ophthalmic surgeon. And we're going to be talking about dry eyes, menopause, eye issues as we age, all of that, macular degeneration, I'm sure it's all going to come up. So if you have something that you'd like to comment on or a question, please pop it in the comments below. I'll make sure that we try and get round to everything. Is this something that you suffer from? Is this something that you've noticed with the aging process, maybe with the loss of estrogen from 40s onwards? Has this made your eyes drier? Be interesting, wouldn't it, to see? Very nice to see you all. Thank you. Uh, oh, okay, so Julie wakes up with dry eyes and she's tried all the eye drops with no joy. Okay, well, we might well have some help for you. So it's going to be very interesting, I think. Yeah, dry eyes, interesting syndromes there. Your right eye waters a lot. Interesting, okay. Well, we are going to have the expert with us. So let's see, um, ocular migraine. Oh, dear, that's so awful. My poor Lily's had migraine virtually all week. Hi, Ruth. Put. Nice to see you. Nice to have a guy. How are your eyes? You need to have great eyesight as a top makeup artist, obviously. Uh, so, yeah, Dawn Sims. So, we've talked before because Dawn and her other professorial colleagues at Moorfields have created MTHK, which is an eye care range that we'll be talking about. And I've been taking these, actually, they're vitamins, the eye vitamins, so we talked about that last time. Um, but today we're going to be focusing more on sprays and drops and things like that help for eyes. We do have a Liz Loves, so on the MTHK range, very kindly, they've organised for us to have 10% off everything that we talk about here. So if you want to go and check that out. And there's a free eye check that we can all do on their website. So really genius. I've just done it actually. So we're going to be sharing the results together. So let's see if Dawn is in the house. No, I can't see a request just yet. So Dawn, if you are watching, please uh, make sure that you click the request to join. Nice to see you, Nikki. I saw you earlier on my Liz L Me. Um, so I did two lives today. So both with a menopause hormone focus, so my earlier live was with a great brand, A. Vogel, talking all about their menopause support herbs and supplements, talking about things like sage for hot flushes and hibiscus and magnesium to help calm and just regulate a better night's sleep. It was a really interesting chat. So if you haven't seen that, if you weren't around live to watch it at 11 o'clock, I've kept it up on my Instagram. So after this, if you fancy a bit more menno chat, or maybe later in the week, just hop over to Liz Me, and you'll see the chat with Ali, who is the A. Vogel Nutrition Consultant. And they've got so much good information actually on the Vogel website. Do you know they've got this menopause hub support group and they've helped over 85,000 women. Isn't that amazing? They've been doing this for a long time, even longer than me, believe it or not. <laughs> so let's see if we can get Dawn. Yeah, I think she is here. So let's hope this works. I'm just going to make sure that my volume is all fully turned up because we're going to want to hear everything that she has to say. Hello, Dawn. Hello. Professor Sim, it's so nice to have you with us again. Nice to be back. Nice to be back. And last time we spoke, I remember it really clearly because I was in Kenya and I was actually oh. at a friend's house on a little tiny island in the middle of nowhere, battling kind of monkeys and bird life and all of that. So it's nice to be back in London with a slightly clearer connection, hopefully. Yes, and you were you were eating some fruit. <laughs> Look, mulberries. I remember. That's right. Gosh, you've got a good memory. <laughs> Must be all those eye vitamins that you're taking. Yes, I was eating. They were like a wild blueberry crossed with a raspberry, and and I've noticed out there a few berries, and that was very timely, wasn't it? Because we were talking about your eye vitamins, which have a really interesting berry complex the, yes the mackey berry um, the mackey berry tell us about the mackey berry where does that come from oh gosh i could be wrong but it's it chili isn't from... it is it chili or yeah. peru i was always getting it muddled up i, I think it was chili i remember talking to my um, eye doctor friends in chile and it's, it's it's a common berry there but we, we just don't take it around the world yeah and 
I think the full effects are not really known, but it's it has a lot of um, antioxidant uh, and, and it kind of resonates around South America um, and it seems to work for a lot of people. So I take I still take it very often. I've just moved to California. So That's why we're doing it later, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so you're very, are you very early in the morning or are you late at night? It's early in the morning, so it's six in the morning, but the sun is up, so it's good. Six in the morning. I am so not a morning person. That would be my worst nightmare, having to do it at six in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been good here. The, the UV is very high, though. I think it's a little bit tan. You can see a sunburn to my nose as well. And, of course, UV is really important for eyes as well, isn't it, to be aware of? Yeah, particularly at the back of the eye. We can talk about dry eye today, and everyone loves to talk about that because it affects all of us to some extent. But UV is very important for the long haul in terms of um, your sight, particularly near vision. And right. that's something that, you know, has, has um, hit me in the head as we spoke of in the last couple of years with the press biopia coming in. Um, and the UV for eye health and cells at the back of the eye is important. So mm. along with the balanced diet, a supplement is something that, you know, I, I, I take seriously uh, yeah. moving out. Yeah. In so, and, and let, let's talk about the supplement before we move on to the, the sprays and drops and things. So this is a food supplement and it's got really interesting uh, antioxidants in it coming from this special berry. Lutein and zeaxanthin, as well as vitamin C and zinc, um, riboflavin, so B6 and B12 as well. And are these carotenoids, are they the antioxidants that are particularly helpful then for the eye that you've, you and your colleagues have discovered? Yes, yeah, so along with Matty Berry, which has quite unique properties that's not in any other multivitamin. Really? These essentials, you know, I, I like to think of them as the sunglasses that I take at the back of my eye. <laughs> because lutein and zeaxanthin are pigments, so they filter out harmful UV light. And mm. it, you, it's quite difficult to, to have enough from a normal daily diet. Yeah. And having sufficient pigments, I think, towards... I think middle age, particularly where the cells are struggling more than they did when they were younger. And these cells mm. that we're protecting don't replace themselves. So they're like nerve cells. Once they really? die. Yeah, so they're, they're cells in the back of the eye that like, are the sunglasses of, um, of your Gosh. retina. And once they die, that's it. They've gone. Yeah, you're born with that number and, you know, you die with fewer. It's, it's, like, it's like eggs. <laughs> okay, yeah, like ovaries and that. Once once ovaries. it's run out, then it's... So what's the best way to protect them? Obviously, in, in younger people, using sunglasses, you know, you, you see all these standards, don't you, on sunglasses, you know, proper, like a kite mark to show that they give good protection. Do you think all sunglasses work the same or do we need to be going for like Polaroid or special special lenses? I think you need to have a UV filter in there, and there, there are different levels of UV filters. So having a sufficient UV filter, most of them will have that. If you buy a pair of sunglasses just off the shelf, just make sure that there is a UV filter, and that should be enough. But diet is much is, is crucial as well. Mm. Um, a, a good story, you know, we saw a, a young boy who unfortunately has autism and would only eat. Um, kebabs and chips you know, and, and did that his whole life so he was 12 but he had vitamin deficiency to a point that he was almost blind and uh, it was definitely well below the level of driving you know, age 12 um, age 12 but the, that's shocking uh, but he had a, a 7 year history of just e eating kebabs and chips you know. so I, I use that story to scare my children but they eat a lot of fruit so I think, yeah, I, I think you, you, you were cooking lunch or supper for them when we spoke last time. Um, and, yeah, so have they moved with you? They have, yes, lock, stock and barrel, the whole family, and uh, all my ski stuff, but not my back, bike helmet, which is in the middle of the ocean somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> not literally, I hope. Well, not bobbing <laughs> along anyway, but on a container, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I'm in San Francisco, and it's much colder here than in London. <laughs> is it really? And, you know, San Francisco, I remember because I filmed there with the BBC years ago, is quite known for its food culture. 
And you've got yeah. great chefs like Alice Waters, who I filmed with up in Berkeley, Chez Panisse. You know, she was one of the first to bring in the whole concept, I think, of farm to fork for restaurants oh, yeah. and having a farm just outside San Francisco and trying to get all that fresh produce, the beans and the berries and all these things that you talk about. So important. I think we often think about our bodies and our bones and our skin, maybe, but not necessarily the impact of nutrition on our eyes and how well we can see. Yes, yes. You hit the nail on the head. The fresh produce here is amazing. Um, you know, but like I said, uh, I, I, was, I was talking to someone, you know, how many carrots do I have to eat? <laughs> how many do we have to eat to get the same as in a supplement? A lot. Uh, more than a couple of bags, I would say. You know, and that's just too much. And Each day. Thing. Uh, you probably turn orange because there's too much of some things and not enough of the sure. other. Sure, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You reminded me, actually, to, to, to take mine. Is there a certain age, an optimum age, do you think, where we should be uh, supplementing for our eyes specifically? I think just prior to 40, you should start up these things. Once you hit 40, I think all of us remember uh, how things change when you hit 40. And yeah. the, the, it's not just decline, I would say, but it's uh, the, the homeostasis of all balance of things really come into play then and the body is not so well prepped to compensate and then think of it as as a night out on the town you know, i used to be able to do that you know, a couple times a week but now if i have a dinner party i'm dead the next day yeah. um <laughs> although i have noticed the americans seem to eat and go to bed much earlier do you notice that on oh, the west oh. coast they're, they're, they're in restaurants at six o'clock and they're in bed by nine i actually uh, know I, I quite envy them that now that's so that's different to I, Europe. I, I think that's so... Let me talk about sleep then. Yeah, <laughs> go on. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll come to dry eye in a minute. So we will. <laughs> but sleep is so important. I might have banged on about it last time as well. Yeah. Um, so nutrition, yes, 100% what you put in your body is really important. Um, you know, with, with the caveat of being balanced and enjoying your life, yeah. But sleep is something you can control. And if you're able to get that eight hours or more, yeah. I think you will need it more and more. And as you get older, the bit of the brain, the amygdala, is a tiny, tiny bit buried deep within that sets your body clock, becomes a little bit less happy. So when you're right. a teenager, you can't get out of bed. But as <laughs> you get older, I have had grannies and, and my mom and you know, my dad um, who who just sleep four hours and they're up mm. and, and something happens with your body clock and, and we've all had the granddad snoring whilst watching TV, isn't it? So uh, sleep is something you can control if you can regulate that. It, it mm. also helps. You will see it in your skin, in your eyes. If you mm. don't sleep, it, you have problems focusing and you know things like that. We've all, we've all been there. Uh, yeah, the yeah. And then moving on to dry eyes in particular, is this something that we see more in later life? And, you know, with women, is, is it linked to loss of estrogen and hormones? This is very much so, I think. Um, menopause is a, is a funny old thing. Uh, I have a... I don't say. ...going through puberty at the moment, so as she tells us, anything she does bad, like anything, like she's naughty or she's... You know, I am going through puberty. <laughs> <laughs> my my, my oh. eldest daughter was threatening to throw my youngest a puberty party. Apparently it's a thing. He was absolutely horrified at the idea. <laughs> but I, it's just the mix of weird levels of hormones. So hormones are very much about balance as well. It's not just presence or absence. And so it's not as simple. If I take HRT, HRT you know, I'll be back to myself. That's not how it works. And just the balance of estrogen and progesterone affects the glands of the eyes. So it affects the oil gland that produces the, the top layer. It, it affects the glands that produce the, the water layer of the tears. Wow. And it affects the, the, the glands that produce the mucus layer of the tears. So, you know, tears are made up of three components. You've got mucus, the X infrastructure. You've got the watery bits that we're all well aware of. You've got a little layer of oil, good oil prevents evaporation. So that kind of balance um, of the components is really messed up when hormone levels changes. Right. 
Right. And then, of course, at this time of year, particularly in the UK, we can be susceptible to things like hay fever. I mean, that used to wreck my eyes so much. The but itching. Oh. It's worse. It's the worst. And it, it gets worse and worse with each year. So your body becomes um, sensitized to, let's say, tree pollen. A lot of us are, are allergic to tree yeah, pollen or grass. Mm. So it looks at the grass pollen and it goes, I don't like you. I'm going to produce more mucus and invite my other inflammatory cells to come join the party and make you puffy and red. The next year, they meet you again. They go, oh, hello, tree pollen. I remember you. And more of their friends. So it, it builds. And inflammation mm. is separate to just uh, tears. It has a big component. Inflammation, I'm, I'm going to on, go on about this a little bit. I think it's important. Here, here is one example. But dry eye can be a kind of inflammation as well. So it's a cascade and it's a vicious mm -hmm. cycle. Unless you break it, you know, it just doesn't stop. Okay. And I know that's why a lot of women, you know, will go to their doctors, uh, GPs, I guess, possibly see the optician about dry eyes. What are some of the symptoms? How can we diagnose dry eyes and the severity of it? So, you know, in the MTHK website, there is a, a, a test that you can do. I have and, done it. Oh, let's look at your results whilst you pull that out. Okay, oh. okay. So, yeah, so, so my results. It's a great little test, by the way, and it's a free test. Anybody can do it. I know, Rachel, you'll pop a link on Facebook for all our watchers there, and I'll make sure that we pop a link um, in the bio for Instagram, and also, obviously, on Liz, our well-being, you can find it. But if you go to mthk, umthk.com, yeah, really simple. You'll find it there. It's a great test. So this test is not just something we made up. You know, it's, a, it's actually a, a clinical test that's used in clinical trials as well as clinical practice. So it's called the OSDI. We love acronyms. But it's the oh, Oculus yes. Surface Disease Index. And Ooh. this score from 100. Um, encompasses what dry eye is, how you feel, and talks about the severity. And so with that severity, mm. you can tailor how you manage your eyes on a daily basis. Um, dry eyes, burning, itchy, scratchy, mm. blurred vision, people don't talk about that. Um, I think the test is useful because you kind of know where you stand and how yeah. often you to moisturize. Do they have a dry skin equivalent? <laughs> That's so interesting. Uh, no, not a not a specific test that I'm aware of. Maybe dermatologists can, can confirm that. But I think what's interesting about this is it when I did the test, it asked me questions that made me think about things. So it asked me about you know whether my eyes felt drier in the wind, for example, which they do. Or if I'm in low humidity or air conditioning environments, you know, all these things and whether they affect my reading, which they do. don't really t tend to affect my TV watching. That came out as pretty normal. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, these factors can be really significant. Yeah, definitely. And if you, if you have just early dry eye symptoms, so let's say you're, you know, score of 10 out of 100, which is not too bad. That's not too bad. That's kind of... I, I'm in around the 20 range. That's why I haven't had... Um, um, refractive surgery because I don't want to make my eyes drier. No, does eyes that make your eyes drier? Because I have had laser surgery on my eyes. Yes, it does. It does. It, there's Good to know. Nobody it. told me that at the time. <laughs> okay. Note to self. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Well known. And, and, you know, most people are able to put up with it with just some simple lubrication. If you had refractive surgery, you could have dry eyes. And it does mm. affect some on, on, the, on the eye as well, which has implications to, to eye health in the long term, but not so much that I would advise against laser effective surgery. I think it's something you just need to be aware of. Sure. But that, um, what was I on about? Oh, yes. So if you have like 10, 11, 12, you can use the spray occasionally, especially in, in, in times where your eyes are dry. The drops are really for above 10. Uh, but if you like okay. drops, so I like sprays and drops. So, so drops, let, let's talk about the difference because actually my, my test results were 11. Um, <laughs> although it, it, it gave me here, tell me, it says the score was 11, but the aggregated score was 23. So what does that mean? 
I, I don't know, actually. Sorry about that. Let's I'm look. not sure which one I should look at. Da, 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 da. And in fact, I, I, I did it twice because I've done it sort of pre and post hay fever because it does change. So I think that's quite an interesting thing that you can do it at different stages. And for example, you could do it if you were traveling or if you're working in an air conditioned environment, you know, it might make your eye symptoms a little bit worse. The aggregated score that you should be looking at. So that's the one that culminates all the, all the different questions that you answer. It's not too many questions. But no, it's OK. So, oh, I'm up there with 23 then. So that's not quite as good as I thought. <laughs> so, yeah, let, let's talk about So Last time you did show us the spray, which I've been using, which I oh. really like because this you use it. Talk us through how to use it because you use it. You don't have to keep your eyes open, do you? You should close your eyes. So like How does that work? How does spraying something onto your eyelids help your eyes? So the eyelids are positioned in a way that it wicks, it will wick the, um, the fluid into the eye if it's on the surface of the eye. So, you know, with kids who don't want to have eye drops, we make them close their eyes and we put a little drop in the corner of the eye just there. Just just one, yep, and then you blink. And your eyes will pull that fluid into the eye. And oh, it will spread. Okay. So just what we're like 10 centimeters or so away. And spray, just spray, spray. spray. And, blink. and then. And blink. 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 It's nice. It smells then, nice too. And it's good that your eye makeup is not smudged. <laughs> no. Haven't even You're smudged my mascara. So this is something that is. Is it less concentrated, perhaps, than the drops? Because I've also got the drops here now as well to talk about. Less of it will go in the eye. It, it also doesn't have the hyaluronic acid that's within the drops. So the drops has hyaluronic acid. And I think we're all very familiar with the term, this skin cream. I love cream. a bit of hyaluronic acid. Can't get enough as we age. It's such a great ingredient for moisturizing, keeping everything plump. Uh -huh. So there is a 0.3% hyaluronic acid in there, and that acts as a moisturizer for your eyes. So it stays in the eye for longer, and, and that helps people with, I would say, you know, above, definitely above 10, but above 20 aggregate score uh, for the US. And, and that, it's like putting a, a good moisturizer on your face, uh, and the spray would be kind of a top up during the day as you get along. And top tip, I would, you know how you moisturize at night before you go to bed? Yeah. I, those drops in the fridge and when you go for you know, one, one last coffee or tea or juice or milk put a cold drop in the eye cold drink, drop in the eye at bedtime and it will feel like someone's you know massage your eyes it's just the soothingness and the moisturizing that. i'm and absolutely going to try that so one drop in each eye at bedtime oh, yeah and you know when it spills over into my face I know it's pathetic. I should really buy eye cream. I just go. Mm -hmm, just rub it in because you've got the hyaluronic acid to rub in. Genius, I, absolutely I, I, genius. And then, so how often would you use the drops? Would you just use them once at night, or would you use them again throughout the I day or in the morning? If your score is um, twenty, just once in the morning, once at night should be sufficient, and then you yeah. you spray through the day. If you have the drop with you, and if you don't, it doesn't really matter. But if okay. you're in an 40, 40, 50 mark or even higher, you can use the drop every hour, every half an hour. Wow. Wow. And eyes are just not good. But then a normal amount would be four to five times a day, you know, every couple of hours, and then spray mm. if you need to. That's so brilliant and that's so interesting to hear. We're being taught uh, questions here about things like eye pressure. Does that help with pressure in the eyes? I'm not sure why. Why would you have eye pressure? No, it doesn't. So eye pressure is a completely different condition mm. uh, called glaucoma. And that one you should go to the optician for a check yeah. once a year, once you hit 40, especially if someone in your family has it. But the drops don't have that at all. For, for glaucoma. And what about things like macular degeneration? We hear that term talked about a lot in terms of aging. What is it and how can we help avoid it? So macular degeneration is important. You know, it affects somebody in our family or for most of us so common it's I, it's a disease of you know i would say our privilege of being able to live to an older age now and mm. it's the vitamins which we talked about 
helps that macular degeneration. And all it means is, remember those ovary cells in the eyes? It's not a good allegory. But those cells that we are born with a finite number, they will die as we get older. If they die very, very quickly, you have macular degeneration. Right. So, and does that, that affects your vision mostly, does it? Makes you less able to see as well? It does. And it starts off with reading vision um, and then looking at faces clearly okay. and then distance in the longer term. But it, it affects just that centre bit that's important for our, our acuity, so being able to see small print, etc., etc. Mm. Well, you know, I have to say, I think the eye vitamins are such a fantastic investment, um, you know, to come with an ophthalmic background uh, and and recommendation because our sight is so precious can you imagine for those who lose their sight or have lost their sight I mean it's and that's what you're dealing with as an ophthalmic surgeon isn't it almost on a daily basis yeah because sight confers independence uh, and mm. driving it's driving and you would yeah. rely on your family just to tell you you know that's my patients mm. whether or not on the oven is that's you know 180 Gosh. 200 and you know we put stickers on it so you can feel it but that's really something you want to avoid something as simple as the washing machine or or a little task around the house of thermostat looking at your tablets <laughs> which tablets yeah is which tablets are you taking that could be quite important mm. and then the oh. drops i think you know hyaluronic acid is really the unique thing about the drops and is it about hyaluronic acid you know, do, you, do you know where it comes from no tell well i knew that it, in the old days didn't it come from roosters from cockerels that sort of red flabby bit that they've got on their faces on their heads comes from the, the, yeah uh, so the they used to or the size of the crown because the the cosmetic industry did not have synthetic hyaluronic acid at that mm, time so cool i had roosters um that bred roosters. So he was my patient, actually. <laughs> really? And he bred them for hyaluronic acid? It had a big farm in Sweden. So I said, how on earth did you stop the roosters from killing each other? And, they, and he said, we keep them in threes so they don't kill each other. If you put them in twos, one is dead in the morning. Sorry to end on a morbid, but I think it's important to know where hyaluronic acid came from. It's all synthetic now. But the reason right. that that's good. No roosters involved. No, 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 no cockerels. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good example, I think, of how synthetics can be good, you know, and, and a force for good. I mean, we're always told that natural is better, but actually in some cases, you know, you, you do want to find the exact replica made synthetically. Yes, because the weight of the hyaluronic acid is important. So next time you look at hyaluronic acid, look at the percentage and the molecular weight. So you have very thick, very thin in the middle, the whole spectrum. And they used to breed roosters for different molecular weights. So we had a long, boring, nerdy discussion about that. But now you can synthetically make it. It's much cleaner, it was cruel free, and the cost is, is much less as well. Yeah, yeah. How amazing. I, wonder, I always wonder about how people discover these things in the first place. I know. We, yeah. we do. Some cultures, they don't eat it. But because it's the collagen and you know, all good things. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, maybe. But I, I think, I mean, hyaluronic acid is one of those things that, you know, internal, external. I know about it for skin, but I haven't oh. realized. So is this the first time then that it's actually been put into an eye drop? No, it's, it's in some eye drops as well. Mm. Other yeah. And eye drops that are prescribed and um, eye drops that cost you know double triple quadruple what these drops are cost yeah it costs and you don't need to get a prescription you can go straight to the expert site and and get help so when people have transplants of the cornea in the front of the eye so mm -hmm. they have to have an average transplants we um prescribe the hyaluronic acid drops but at a much higher concentration and that right. can be a bit of sticky blurs your vision but yeah. if they're not quite then it's absolutely fine Okay, so you get the moisturisation without the blurring. Great. I really can't wait to try. I can't wait to put it in the fridge, actually, and try it at night. That sounds absolutely amazing. Um, somebody's asking on Facebook, does eyelid surgery, blepharoplasty, cause dry eyes? 
It depends. It does is the short answer. So blepharoplasty, you tighten the skin around the eyes, mm -hmm. which is a very simple surgery. Uh, and a lot of people have problems with this. When the skin of the eye becomes too saggy, it does block your vision. And yeah. so you have it tightened. When you have it over tightened, <laughs> right. you can't close your eyes properly. Then you can't close your eyes. <laughs> oh dear. So, it's a bit of a bad side effect, isn't it, if that, if that happens? It's not just the closing. It, even if you can close your eyes properly, it affects your blink. So if you blink, your eyes should, like a windscreen wiper, spread tears through the eyes. Okay, right? each time you blink, yeah. But if you have a blepharoplasty and it's too tight, it might just miss the bottom bit, and then you start Ooh. it. And it's the cycle of dry eye, just, you know, it gets worse and worse and worse, so... Moisturize your eyes. Moisturize your eyes, definitely. So you can use the spray and the drops, or if you do the test and the score is not so high, you could start with just the spray and just keep this with you. I have to say it's great during hay fever season as well if you're suffering. It's good for the beach. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And oh. flying as well. I mean, you're going to be flying long haul, aren't you, now that you're over in L.A.? And flights oh, yeah. are so dry. I mean, if you're cabin crew, for example, that I could imagine that would be invaluable. It'd be good if they put that in the little tote bag. They could give yeah, wouldn't it? Then yeah. To... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then if you're taking the supplement, if you're taking the eye vitamins, which I have to say I am now back on, having been reminded, thank you, um, how quickly before you see any benefit, or is this something that you're not really going to experience a benefit you just have to kind of trust that it's going to improve your vision i think a couple of weeks at least you, know, you can't just mm -hmm. take it and within the week say oh gosh i can see better it's not a it's not a miracle cure it's more of a prevention and maintenance so within yeah. a couple of a month you should see something notice something different so 12 14 days mm. uh, about but you know take it every day i i'm very i i'm very good now I used to be very bad, but I put it right where my coffee is, and I never forget to drink Never coffee. forget it. Okay, no, yeah, never, we never forget the cup of coffee, that's for sure. So it means that it's always there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's very true. And then talk about cataracts, because people often talk about cataracts, particularly as they age. Is this something that can help? How can we help prevent getting cataracts in the first place? So cataracts... Um, is when the lens in the eye um, becomes a little bit harder, yellow, or sometimes have little sparkly white bits. So it's, it's like the lens of a pair of glasses. And it sits just behind the cornea, which is the surface of the eye. And it's inevitable everyone gets cataracts as they get older. Some people get it sooner than later. Okay. It runs where you get it young, you get it younger. Really? If you live in the um, light, so like in... in uh, near the equator, you will have um, cataracts earlier as well. And the first thing you notice with cataract is glare. So it's not your vision being worse, but just glare from bright lights and not being able to dry that light. But dry eye causes that too. So it's uh, anything that messes with light going into your eye will give you glare. And when you say glare, it's like, what is glare? Glare is simply where light goes into the eye and it goes through clear media it passes straight through like a beam. But if you have anything not untoward or a smudge in your lens, it scatters that light and we perceive that as glare. So that's that's what glare means. Mm. And glare, it's the first thing. And when you have cataract surgery or you decide to have your lens and your eyes change and upgraded, mm. mm -hmm. um, the driving at night that, that um, you know, pushes people, you can't really avoid it with vitamins and drops. It's that's something that you know. It's just there. It's the UV light, uh, particularly with the sun. Is, uh, yeah. So important to, to protect the eyes. And I remember when we talked before, actually, about um, cataracts that, you know, I, I was in Kenya, so I was on the equator when we spoke and, and you know, exactly realising, and particularly, I think, for some of us now out and about over the summer, you know, those sunglasses and the protection and the think about the, the eyes. Some questions coming in. Um, somebody's asking here, would the vitamins be good uh, for anyone with a repaired detached retina? Yes, I mean, it, it doesn't actually affect 
the the detachment itself. That's a mechanical thing. So if your if your retina um, detaches from the back of the eye and it's fixed back on, uh, what can happen is those cells that I talked about, the finite number of cells, you have less of them. You know, they, they more of them perish in the time of that detachment or right. any insult. So I would say. If you've had a detached retina before, taking the vitamins would only uh, support the cells that remain in the back of the eye. Yeah, yeah. Another question here. Are any of your products uh, designed to help with diabetic eye damage? We haven't talked about diabetes and eye damage. That's a very interesting subject. That's my, it's my specialty area, diabetes and eyes. <laughs> is it? Okay, great. Well, you can give us the lowdown on that. First of all, is, is there anything that we can do here to help? So number one, the awareness, anyone with diabetes should have a photograph taken at the back of the eye or have an examination by an ophthalmologist once a year above age 12. You must do that. My grandma uh, went blind with diabetes, and so she died, you know, like completely blind. You're very happy, but blind. Uh, and it's because we caught it too late. With diabetes, you don't notice anything until it's too late where you notice your vision. The vitamins don't help directly with the diabetes. Control of the diabetes will help. But it does, again, keep those cells healthy, so it doesn't do you yeah. any good. Yeah. But the one thing you must do with diabetes is get your eyes checked once a year. If you're in the UK, go to an optometrist. If you're outside the UK, go see an, an eye doctor. Yeah, but yeah. And is there a difference there between type 2 diabetes and type 1 in terms of eye health? It does affect the eye in both, and right. it affects in type 1 um, at a younger age. But type 1s tend to be pretty well managed by the doctors. Yeah, because um, they're, they're picked up early, aren't they? They go a little bit nuts when they go to university and young adult life. You just don't take care of yourself uh, like we all do. Um, but with diabetes, it's less forgiving. So that's why they have more advanced eye disease. But type 2 mm. affects the eyes as well. And it can affect it very detrimentally. And in, mm. I would say, four-fifths of patients that we treat with diabetes, yes, we're able to revert the effects, so they're able to drive again. But the one in five patients will have vision that's below drive, driving limits. And they're young, you know, they're, what, 40s, 50s, 60s. So Gosh, you being able to drive in your 40s, that's quite tragic, isn't it, because of type 2 diabetes? Yes, I, I think diabetes is a, is a big thing. Um, it's a health awareness thing, uh, much more than just wellness. That it's mm. a need to learn to live with, uh, with the right support. So it's a lot out there yeah. for diabetes. And so much chat at the moment, particularly on, on what we eat and the dangers of sugars and spiking our insulin. What's, what's your view as an ophthalmic surgeon on sugars in the diet? I, I think, you know, as, as any doctor, I think any health um, conscious uh, human sugars, having moved to America recently with <laughs> high fructose corn syrups. And, that high uh, fructose corn syrup is in flipping everything. You cannot get good bread, you know. I mean, you can get sourdough, but you can't get, you know, just normal baker's loaf, sliced white. I know that's not good for you. Um, but sugar and eyes, what the eyes don't like is big changes in sugars. So that right, your big spikes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you get that when you, you know, eat a big, I, <laughs> I just learned this famous here, yeah, it's like a cookie ice cream, another cookie, and they coat it with chocolate. <laughs> Dawn, this is not good. Yeah, Step anyway. away from the chocolate-covered ice cream cookies. Oh, oh my goodness. I, I, don't, I don't have any. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, if you, if you eat, like, half of that, your sugar levels are going to spike. And with diabetes, mm. for most of us, we're able to control that with a reduction of insulin. So the insulin manages that big spike in, right. in sugar level. Right, just, yeah, calms it. it. In our belly, you know, and, and all around the areas that we don't want. Uh, but at least we don't have high sugars in our blood. Um, with high sugars, it's, it's a pro-oxidant effect, so it kills cells in the back of the eye. It kills blood vessel cells. So that's why in diabetes, you have problems with eyes, kidneys, heart, the extremities. 
etc. Gosh. And what about things like floaters in the eyes? People are asking that on Instagram, quite a few comments and questions. You know, when you look up at the sky and you can see these little sort of grey dots floating around that are in your eye and not out, out there in the environment. Yeah, so I, I name my floaters. I have a couple of them. You know, there's, um, uh, right. What do you call your floaters? <laughs> I, I have one that I call Earl. I'm not sure why. It's Earl? Yeah, yeah, I know you well, after me? <laughs> Am I floating about in your eye? <laughs> but floaters are, we all have them. And, you know, we have an eyeball. You know, the eye is not just the front of the eye. And yeah, the yeah, eye, it's round. Filled within is jelly. And that that's what we're born with as well. So we're born with thick gel in the eyes. I mean, you're a little baby that you nice and robust. And as you get older, the gel liquefies within the eye. And as it liquefies, the gel is made of protein, it precipitates. And so you get little fibrils of protein. And that happens to all of us. It, it affects so many people to the point that it drives them nuts. But the brain is quite mm. good at it. Stop looking at your floaters is, is my, my best advice. Don't have surgery or laser for it because it's mm. too hard. You don't do it in the UK for that reason. There are some conditions where you have too many floaters, and yes, we will go in the eye and replace that jelly, but it's a big, big operation. Yeah, so basically just ignore them, train your brain not to, to, to defocus on them, because I guess the more you go, oh, there's my floater, there's Earl, she's floating around just there, then your brain will kind of keep recognising it and keep focusing on yeah. it maybe, or... The one caveat is, if you have a lot of new floaters, like uh, as if somebody sprayed dust particles all around you, if you just see that and you see a few flashing lights, you should go see somebody to have your eye checked because it could be a retinal tear or retinal detachment stuff. And the reason for that is because as it rips, the, the back of the eye spits out a, a, a dust cloud of pigment so that's the one time you need to, to see somebody. If it's mm. just the filter that you know, that, oh, there, there you go again. You know, now that I'm thinking of it, I see, I see her. Yeah, no, I'm seeing mine too. It's like, go away. <laughs> Stop focusing on you. <laughs> no pun intended. But, you know, it's, that's just part of the structure of the eye. That's it's, good to know. It's normal. How often should we go to an optician? You know, even if our eyes are relatively normal, our sight is pretty good. Maybe we've picked up a inexpensive pair of readers from the chemist for, you know, a couple of pounds. You know, and you might be thinking, well, that's fine. I can just pop these on when I want to read. How important is it, do you think, to go and, and get a, a, an eye check from an optician? After the age of 40, once a year, it's really important. And in the UK, we have really excellent opticians. You know, people have so much to say about chains, etc. But the chains are pretty good. And I, I know a lot mm. of opticians them. And they give you a thorough eye exam. Yeah. You, you don't buy a pair of glasses if you don't need them. You know, don't get, be sensible. If you can see, don't, don't purchase a new pair. Yeah. Um, but do an eye check for things that you don't feel and are best detected early, like glaucoma, like any diabetes in the yeah. eye early macular degeneration they'll do a scan of the eye so definitely once once a year really really important after the age of 40 excellent a couple of other questions here such good questions coming in thank you for these um what do you think about sunglasses versus getting early morning sunlight and I ask this, um, not only has, has Kay Dawson asked it, but I'm interested as well, because I'm seeing quite a lot of these so-called kind of biohackers saying that the light com coming from the sun is different first thing. You have more near-infrared and less UV, which we obviously is intensified when the sun is high. And they're saying that to get exposure to this different level of uh, wavelengths, actually helps impact our circadian rhythm so that we then get into a bitter, better rhythm and sleep better in, at night because we've had that early morning sunlight? Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a topic that's really interesting because I love sleep and, and <clears throat> circadian rhythms. Um, I would say the light spectrum is uh, an interesting one as well. So you have visible light and you have 
the UV high frequency waves, and then you have the nice long infrared waves, you know, at the other end of the spectrum, and they can lie outside the visible spectrum as well. So there is some research out there that shows the longer wavelength light um, for the eye it may stimulate good immune cells for repair. So that's where you know this probably comes from. But I, I read all these things with, with you know skepticism because it's the, the levels from that early morning sun uh, varies. What if it's cloudy? You know yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. I would say the the short wavelengths are bad, definitely. The long wavelengths may be good. You know you do what's good for you. Mm -hmm. um, UV protection where there's no UV is is also not required. Everyone knows that light is important for mood as well. Yes. So don't just block out all light. Don't just block out all light. I think that's a really interesting message that, you know, if it's very early in the day or there's not particularly high levels of UV, you don't need to hide behind sunglasses all the time. They're there, are you saying, as a shield for high UV? Yes, and there is a new treatment. Um, it's a, a photobiomodulation, it's called. Photobiomodulation, I was just looking at that yesterday. I'm very interested in getting it for my daughter, Lily because she has an autoimmune issue and they've been sh shown that these forms of light waves can help with pain? Yes, and it helps so many things. It's not so well understood yet. The mechanisms of action is not. So if you look at MOA, always ask about the MOA. You know, What's so MOA? The mechanism of action is okay. very science. So like, oh look, Use this pen, it will make your hand better. And say, what's the mechanism of action? How does it work, basically? Okay. Um, that's top tip. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not well, but you have these goggles now um, that are undergoing clinical trial that are thought to reverse changes from diabetes in the back of the eye. Very well run, well designed, um, uh, trusted, kind of scientifically robust clinical trials. So we should have some results from that within the next couple of years and whether these wavelengths of light actually reverse kind of diabetic changes, but maybe aging changes at the back of the eye Aging. As well. So you could help to stimulate your immune cells and those sort of stem cells in the back of the eyes to impact the entire body, not just your eye health. Yes, I, you know, definitely. And the other thing that I wanted to touch on that I didn't get to share with you well, so we talked of estrogen, we talked a lot about estrogen, yeah. always framed as the baddie. It's not true, it's not true, you know, it's... Uh, no, it's estrogen, so estrogen is the goodie, oh my goodness, we love estrogen here at Lizard Wellbeing, we run on it. Progesterone and estrogen, you know, the balance of which is yeah. the baddie. Yeah, sure, yeah. We talk about androgens, so you, you did mention there was a man on the, on the audience today. Yes, Rupert, if he's still with us, yep. So androgens are like testosterone, and uh, testosterone at certain levels have had have been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects as well. So as a man ages, you have declining levels of testosterone, and then the accompanying kind of symptoms with that. And that's not talked about enough because I think men don't like to talk about health in general. And this is a generalization, yeah. but yeah, generally. Um, I would say. And so it's the levels, but women also have androgens at a low level. Oh, yeah. So we must have testosterone in us as well. So the balance of not having enough of these sex hormones in general and the, the imbalance has been implicated in dry eye, not just, oh, I don't have enough estrogen. Or, oh, you know, the testosterone as well. Fantastic information. So definitely the men out there. They have dried eye too. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I know some men do get testosterone gel and testosterone replacements, but for them using the spray, using the drops, they could do the same test, could they online? Yes, yeah. So it's, it's not just for females. I think we yeah. forget that um, the males age as well. Yeah. Um, lastly, and then I know that we, we must let you go, a uh, lot of questions about hay fever. This one from Healthy Girls Journey says, what should I use for itchiness from hay fever? My kids are rubbing their eyes to the point where they're bright red. There are a lot of um, uh, hay fever drops that you can get over the counter. They tend to be less potent. You can get from your GP uh, a hay fever drop that has two components uh, that... Um, 
uh, prevent the inflammatory cascade. So top tip one, prevention is better than cure. When the season's coming up, it happened to you last year, use those hay fever drops before your symptoms start. And then you can supplement and lubricate with the spray and drops. Spray is very good for the kids because they don't mind it. Spray yeah. children. Uh, the drops, you have to wrestle with them a little bit. And that actually helps to reduce the inflammation in between your doses of hay fever drops because those don't actually make you feel better. That tries to counter the source of the problem. Right. That's a good tip that if you, are, if you do have drops from your GP, you can use this alongside, in between, you know, spread out your doses, presumably. You just have to wait at least two, three, four minutes between oh, drops. Oh, okay. Yeah. Put your hay drop in. Mm -hmm. And then you put a ironic eye drop in, it washes out the first one and vice versa. So you, you wait you for it to wait. Yeah. 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 And from what age could you be taking the eye vitamins? I mean, you, you say we should all be doing that sort of really from 40 onwards. Is there benefit to, to taking them earlier in our 20s, maybe? I, I think you can take it at any age. Like, mm. you can take them that's age appropriate at any age. So it depends yeah. on what your priorities are. If you have a, a history of eye health problems in your family, you may want to take them sooner, but not from age 12 onwards. So next year, my, my eldest can have a <laughs> MTHK vitamin. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, this has been so interesting and, and so, so important because, you know, our eyes, they're so precious. And I'm sure, you know, you're working every day with people who, who can't see um, or who are losing their sight. And, you know, to me, that must be just unimaginably awful, really. Yeah, and I, I think it's, it's best if I never meet you. If I meet you, then you didn't do enough to, you know, or you, or you have some... Uh, Problem. Yeah. But in dry eye, if you can tackle it before having to go to an eye doctor, do so. And if you can prevent macular degeneration rather than get treatment from me, yeah. do that. It's uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, really. I'm you know, it's uh, I would never know when uh, I'm nerding out too much on, on one topic or the other. No, it's just brilliant. Oh my goodness, we could. I know that we could carry on all the time um just to say that the eye check if you want to go and do it it's a free eye check it's on mthk.com website remind us again what mthk stands for so it stands for making technology humankind so it plays on the word human and being kind and i think technology is what we live with these days you know, mm -hmm. it's part of what we do we're on it right now uh, yeah. But it does impact our eyes. So it's uh, all about wellness, eye health, uh, it, it, that complements our day-to-day -day living and mm. enables us to, to live well yeah. for as long as possible. One last question while we have you. Um, I know many of us here battle with our own and also our teenagers' screen time. As an ophthalmic surgeon, looking at the eyes, What's your view, and how do you manage your kids? Oh, we lock their phones. Uh, <laughs> I love you. I wish I was that brave. <laughs> For children, it's very important because when they look at their phones, I can see my eight-year-old doing this. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Really you know, are you showing off? Because I have to do that. Um, you know, but when they do that, it makes them short-sighted because when you really close to your face your muscles in the eye contract and they squeeze your lens mm, to like this focus because light from a near object goes this way so you have to focus it in light mm -hmm. from infant comes in parallel so when you look at trees you go ah he's relaxed. okay muscle relaxing Bring something in, the light diverges, so you have to squeeze it back in to get it into focus. Ah. I don't know when we do that. We get tension headaches, we feel tired, you know, we get dry eyes because we don't yeah. think. Children, it squishes the eye in a way it makes it longer. And if you see the kind of the pandemic of myopia or short sightedness in Asia and other countries, it's because children are not left outside long enough to run around. They do a lot of Everything is right in here. Oh my so goodness! It's very, very important. It's um, crucial 
for grown-ups, it's more about your mental wellness and sleep. Mm-hmm. That, that, and not blinking enough. You know? If you look at a screen, you're not blinking. So be, it, I think everything with moderation. Um, mm. But what... <laughs> So interesting. I think we're all sitting here now blinking a bit more to be aware of it. And that is such an interesting point and that I hadn't been aware of, that we take in different lengths of um, wavelengths when we're looking at things. And that's a yet another reason why our kids need to be playing outside and not, you know, looking at screens and, and even or even reading books, you know, just all this close work. You need to get outside, look at the clouds, look at the birds, look at the trees, look at things that are bigger. Can you imagine during the pandemic and, and even in, you know, in China where you've got people who are locked in for, you know, 23 and a half hours a day, they're not getting that opportunity to, to see. So in, in Singapore, where I was born, um, in school, the school curriculum uh, from ages 7 to 12 now, they have put in outside um, uh, physical education time in almost more than half of um, uh, your, your weekly schedule, just because these kids are, uh, uh, you know, getting really short-sighted. And there's a lot of problems that can come with it. Yeah. If, if you, I shot sight of this. So I, I would say, it, just remember the 2020-20 rule. You know, I, I, I didn't come up with that. You know, my colleague, Alex Ayoradis, who's also a top net more fields, um, uh, came up with it. So look away from your screen every 20 minutes. If you do work, 20 minutes, look away, but look far away. Look 20 feet away if you can okay. for 20 So two, two, two. Every 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes. Look 20 away, feet. 20 feet 20 away for 20 seconds. Love that. I'm going to be putting a little reminder on my phone. Absolutely brilliant. And Terry, just to finish, nice comment here, says, I've been using the MTHK eye spray and vitamins. I wouldn't be without them now. So brilliant. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad people are finding it's helped their daily life. You know, that's the whole purpose. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Dawn, it's so brilliant to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for getting up so early. Have a wonderful day across the pond. Enjoy San Francisco. And a, a real pleasure, uh, Liz. Thank you. Nice to see you. Sending you lots of hearts for everybody here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Got a heart back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye. You have to click off, Dawn, otherwise I, I potentially uh, click everybody off. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. As usual, learnt so much. Wasn't that fascinating? Don't we love Professor Dawn Sim? And just to say on the website, you can do the free eye check. And they've got really cool things. Look, I love these. This makes my eyes go slightly funny. I'm not sure whether it's going to do the same to you. They've got a little MTHK tote bag. Isn't that fab? It's like one of those sort of psychedelic things. And you can even get a little cloth if you are, you know, to clean your glasses or your screen. Look at that. Woo! I love that. Anyway, you will find all of that on MTHK. And we are very, very pleased to have been given a 10% discount. So I know lots of you restocking, wanting to try for the first time. You've got the eye vitamins here with the zeaxanthin and the macai berry. Very, very interesting supplements. Uh, to help protect the eyes as we age, we talked about macular degeneration and all of that. And there's little cells, unique cells at the back of our eyes to help protect those. And then, of course, you've got the dry eye spray and the drops. And I'm going to be going straight after this and putting mine in the fridge to use a drop in each eye at bedtime. So looking forward to it. So that's mthk.com if you want to go and check that out. Um, talking about eyes, and this, I promise you, is a complete coincidence I got a message from a friend of mine who worked at the BBC and she had seen on the BBC archives, I think on their Facebook, um, a couple of clips that somebody in the archives had found of me 28 years ago. I mean, it's so embarrassing, I almost don't actually want to talk about it. Um, and it's of me wearing different pairs of glasses. I'm doing a piece on eye health and it's it's so weird. I mean, I just look. I was I have to say I was pregnant at the time. My son is now 29, so I was pregnant with Guy. So I've got a very round little face and quite a high squeaky voice 
And the way they've shot it, there's a woman there who I'm talking to, I'm interviewing. And for some bizarre reason, she is standing, and she's a very tall, statuesque lady, um, and I'm sitting. But you don't get that in the frame. For some reason, the camera angle was very strange. So it looks like I'm talking to a giant. <laughs> and then I'm trying on all these ridiculous glasses. Uh, and I mean, in this high little squeaky voice, it's very funny. So thank you to my friend, Mantej, who saw that. Terry says, yeah, I saw that clip on BBC Archives. It was brilliant. Um, and thank you also to my team at Lizard Wellbeing for posting that and, and sharing it with everybody. Very, very funny indeed. And in fact, it is Throwback Thursday, isn't it, if you're watching this in real time. And I found a throwback picture of myself with Gordon Ramsay back in the day before he was a, a famous TV persona. And I popped it on my Instagram, so do take a look at that and drop me a comment if that's something that you remember from back in the day. Nikki, you can go and see it. I actually put a link. I might take it down, but currently there is a link on Liz Me stories if you want to want to take a look. Um, lots of you loving the live that I did with Get Sensate. So the Sensate that helps you sleep. If you're talking about sleep, then you do get your £20 off. That's GetSensate.com. Also, I know that Dawn was talking about diet, and one of the things that comes up time and time again with eye health is, of course, your DHA and your EPA, your omega-3s. One of my favorite supplements for the omega-3 is a female-founded British brand called Bear Biology. And Bear Biology, you can see them, bearbiology.com. They've got 15% off using your Liz Loves code, and it's actually Liz Loves 22 so if you want to stock up on your fish oils, particularly for eye health and for so many other reasons, brain health, if you'd like to get your 15% off, then it's Liz Loves 22. So it is a very slightly different, um, different code. And also you get 20% off Youth and Earth, talking about aging and aging well. I did a great live with our friend Ed. This is the one that we were talking about recently, Spermidine. And it is brilliant for aging, aging and sleep. So I've been taking my spermidine and I think it's excellent stuff. Um, it helps to counteract aging. It helps promote longevity by activating autophagy. Do you remember we talked about that? Have you got your notes? Autophagy. And that's where our cells help to clean themselves. And we, that process diminishes with age, like so many of these things, honestly. Isn't it wonderful that we've got all these experts around us that can help us and tell us so that we can hopefully age better and help prevent so many of these just awful degenerative diseases that are so debilitating and so important in life. You know, things that you can stop, you know, stop you driving, for example, because you can't then get your driving test um, or it makes you dangerous on the road or you have more accidents or whatever. So, so the takeaway saying, yes, I take Bear Biology fish oils. I think they're really excellent. I love the quality. Um, Nikki, last day for Alfresco, just ordered mine. Really important. If you are bitten and plagued by mosquitoes, then please don't miss out on the Alfresco. What did you get, Nikki? Did you order the spray? Did you order the perfume, which I love, the perfume power? Honestly, I'm taking that to Italy with me this summer. I'm going to use that as my evening scent. And I love it as a smell, and I'm going to spray it all around my ankles so when I go out, I don't get bitten under the table by these little critters. Uh, and you can get body cream and body lotion. I absolutely love it. 20% off Alfresco. I think it's alfresco.shop, maybe. Um, but they have uh, really, really good, lovely, deliciously scented products that are technically, clinically proven by the Royal Hospital of Tropical Diseases. Um, actually, I'm not sure it's the Royal Hospital, but it's certainly the Hospital of Tropical Diseases um, in London to prove that it does stop the mosquitoes from biting you. And that is alfrescoshop.com. Thank you very much, Rachel, for confirming alfrescoshop.com and Nikki says that she's bought the large lotions plus the travel sizes yeah definitely if you get eaten alive who's saying that seriously go to alfrescoshop.com take a little look around their website I particularly love they've got mini sprays for travel 
So I take those with me. And then I've also got the large size body creams. And, the, and I love the perfume so much. I buy it now in the large size as well. So, yeah, Terry's also saying the, sc the spray and the cream are excellent products. Right, guys, I'm going to have to go because I've been chatting for over an hour. Uh, thanks for staying with me. It's such a great chat, as always. Don't forget, if you missed my one this morning with A. Vogel, you'll find it on Lizelle Me. So it'll stay up on the grid. So if you want to watch it, I'm sorry I don't have Facebook, so I wasn't able to post it on Facebook. But if you want to head over to Instagram, um, Lizelle Me, talking all about sage and hibiscus and magnesium and soy isoflavones, all of that to help perimenopause and menopause. I'm going to be back with you on Tuesday and I'm going to be doing a makeup live with Studio 10. So we're going to be talking all about the summer glow, which will be really good. And just as a little treat for those of you who've stuck with me till the very end, I'm going to give you a sneaky peek of something special. Get ready because it has just arrived. You should be getting yours any time from this weekend onwards if you are a subscriber. Brand new, brand new copy of the Lizelle Wellbeing magazine. And this is the July-August edition. July-August, so perfect for you to take away on your summer travels. If you haven't yet subscribed and you'd like to get it, it's not available in any shop. It's only on subscription. You can get your Olverum moisturiser and body polish worth £58 free as a subscriber. So if you want to get your copy, um, then now is a very good time to do it. Let me know what you think. Yeah, it's a great dress, isn't it, Nikki? It's from Beulah. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So the magazine is brilliant. I'll talk more about that next week, but I just wanted to give you a little sneaky peek as to what's going to be landing through your letterbox very soon if you are a subscriber, but I'll be sharing a bit more on that next week as well. You're going away next week, John. Great. Well, I hope it arrives in time, and I do hope you enjoy it. If you do get it, post a picture. Pop it on Liz Our Wellbeing or Liz Our Me, and then we can repost it. Love to see when your magazines start landing and where they're enjoyed and what you love most about them. Anyway, that's it for today. Sending you lots of love and I will see you live on Tuesday. Until then, have a great few days. I've got a podcast going live on Friday, so don't forget to download that as well. And of course, new things hitting YouTube. So I hope you're subscribed. See you very soon. Thanks for joining. Thanks for all your waves and your hearts. Sending some back. Bye-bye.